Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be putting a bunch of final touches on the rear suspension of the Hellcat station wagon. And I'm going to first start off by Cerakoting the rear knuckles and the rear lower control arms in Cerakote's E100 Blackout. So you have seen me use this product before on the transmission cross member, the engine mounts. It looks super factory OEM. It's like a semi-gloss black. It's super chemical resistant. It's very durable. It works great in engine bays. It has a bunch of other uses. It works pretty much on everything. I'll put a link in the description to Cerakote's website. Go check them out. They have a bunch of different coatings and they all work exceptionally well. I also finally got a bunch of Mopar parts I have been waiting for a very long time. I work with a local dealership in Colorado and it is buymoparparts.com. Link for them will also be in the description, but we finally have everything we need for the rear suspension. And there's also some other stuff I got like Hawk brake pads, stainless steel brake lines, but I really liked, I didn't know Dodge sold these like this, but the rear shoes for the parking brake, they sell it as a complete assembly with the backing plate. I got one for both sides and the rear. I also have all new brand new rear bearings as well as the hubs. We have brand new rear rotors and I didn't notice that they were coated, but they are. We have Stoftech stainless steel brake lines, Hawk brake pads. We also have all the Brembo caliper hardware. I have some speed bleeders because I'm always bleeding the brakes by myself. But these, this is gonna really help out the project and get everything done in the rear. People were kind of mad that these rotors were rusty. And then I didn't notice until I was moving this one day that this wheel bearing in the rear is, I thought it was a suspension, the wheel bearing shot. So that's why I ended up wanting to Cerakote the rear knuckles. Plus they always get rusty and don't look that good from Dodge and it'll just protect everything. We'll have all brand new components because I plan on this car hopefully doing at least 200 miles an hour and that wheel bearing, the wheel would probably fall off. So it's already, I can't believe it's like that, but I'm really glad that I caught it before I went on a test drive. So I wanna button up everything in the rear suspension. So we'll throw the other diff in this thing. We'll also put the parking brake cables on. I got brand new parking brake cables. I have a brand new, parking brake cable from the pedal inside the car. We'll just get all of this stuff in the rear done. So in the next video, I can finally throw on the Magnaflow XMOD exhaust. I've been waiting to throw this on, but I didn't want to do it prematurely. And I just can't wait to see how it looks as well as the rear drive shaft. I'm still waiting on the front one. It has been five months for the front drive shaft. Let's get to work. I'm going to blast the lower control arms and the knuckles, we'll get those Cerakoted and then start pressing and bearings, getting all that stuff done. And then we can start bolting everything on the car.
got back from assembling the rear knuckles and I must say these things look so good in the E100 blackout from Cerakote. So like I said before, the link is in the description, but also as you guys saw, I have all of these bosses coated with the Cerakote. So unlike powder coat, this stuff doesn't matter because it's super thin. The bearing, all that inside diameter, the inside diameter where the ball joint press in was all coated. And it's such a thin coating that you don't have to worry about that. Plus, it's gonna protect it from rusting because it's gonna be coated. And then if I ever need to replace a wheel bearing or a ball joint, it's not gonna be super difficult because it's not gonna be rusty or rusted or seized in. So this is a factory Dodge knuckle, which only has 2,200 miles. And you can see that rust has started here in the boss. Um, these have not seen any rust, but around the edges are. And then this is that one off that SRT Grand Cherokee. And you can see all those places that aren't rusted on this are rusted on that. So this is gonna be really nice. I'm not gonna have to worry about rust or any, you know, it's not that big of a deal, it's cast iron. But to me, I really want it to last and look clean. And it's just that extra step. Plus it's really, you know, this is E100. So it's super slick, very chemical resistant and it works up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and they have a bunch of different coatings that go higher than that. But if I need to pressure wash this, everything, all any grime that gets on here is gonna just pressure wash right off. I'm not gonna have any issues. And I really like how it really comes close to matching the factory dust shield for the parking brake. So let's get these installed on the car. I also baked the lower control arms before I left and they were cooling. So these are coated in E100 as well and they look just as good. I really love this stuff, but it's gonna be really nice having these on the car instead of the factory Grand Cherokee Trackhawk lower control arms because I was never able to 100% set the coilovers because it was going on one side through the a rubber bushing and it was always sagging. So it'll be nice to actually be able to set those coilovers to the correct height or to the permanent height of the charger. But let's get these set to the correct length in the fixture, get them on the car. I also need to put the axles in the differential. We'll get the knuckles on, get the calipers with the pads. I have brand new rotors, brand new pads, brand new brake lines, all the hardware, parking brakes. Let's get all this stuff assembled. I'm gonna head over to the machine shop really quick, face these bolts off, put a chamfer on them. I cut them shorter because they were about that much longer and I didn't want a bunch of excess. So these things will be perfect. They're for the lower control arms to the coilovers. So if you guys remember, I made rear true coilovers. So these are DS coilovers off of a Lexus made to work on the charger, but the thing is, is on the Chargers and Challengers, like I said before, this is a shock and then there's a spring separately. 
So there's gonna be more force on this coilover. And I wanted to have a larger bolt, which the Lexuses have a 14 millimeter shank, 14 millimeter bolt, it just made sense. Instead of having, I believe this is a 12 millimeter bolt that goes through the normal Charger and Challenger rear strut, or not strut, but shock. So that's all gonna be ready to go and done. I also have the lower control arm on with the misalignment spacers that the subscriber Aaron Rue hooked me up with. suspension is now all on there and it looks so good that lower control arm looks really nice all the adjustable arms are cool and we have br the brand new cerakoted hub on there brand new bearings brand new parking brake assembly and shoes looks really good there's one issue when i ordered or when i got these bc racing coilovers i got them for a lexus and then i modified them to work with the the trackhawk lower control arm and a bunch of stuff happened and I ended up cutting the base off of it. So I ordered the same exact part number from BC Racing for an IS250 and they sent me a totally different sleeve which I already designed everything off of the other sleeve and now we're having a boot rubbing issue. I'm gonna have to remedy this with, you know, finding another sleeve that does exactly what the old one did. So the old, Lexus sleeve, this bottom base actually was round and then it came up to a thin rod and then came all the way up here, which would have been perfectly fine. The axle would have never had any contact issues, but then they sent me this other not matching part with the same part number and now we're having issues. So I'm gonna have to remedy that. The parking brake is connected. It was kind of a pain as well. I just had to, you have to push, there's like a latch in there. You have to push that all the way down and then it'll finally click in. So we have all of that set up. One thing I'm gonna do before I throw the rotors on. So these are the rotors off the Trackhawk and you can see that there's like a gray coating on them, on the new ones, but they don't coat the whole rotor for some reason. So as you can see, gray coating, not coated and it then gets all rusty and then it looks really dingy. 
it doesn't really stay gray it doesn't really doesn't really last so everything kind of isn't rusty where that coating is but it doesn't last too long what i'm going to end up doing is cerakote has a really nice product which is glacier c7600 which is a high temp coating which is an air cured coating and it has a really nice shock rating so if i get my rotors like super red hot drive through a puddle it can handle going from that extreme temperature and then going to like us like water getting splashed right onto it so it's not going to flake it's not going to chip and it also works in high heat and it dissipates heat very well it's I now have both of the rotors blasted in 100 grit aluminum oxide. That is the first step. The second step is cleaning them with acetone and then coating them, blowing them off, then coating them with C7600 Cerakote. But I'm only gonna be able to coat one rotor. So I did notice something on this second one when I was blasting it and I didn't notice it until I blasted the whole thing and then went to the back. We have, this uh, nice, they like dropped it and it cracked. But it's not just one, there's multiple spots. There's one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there. So it's all on the back of the rotor. It doesn't look like there's anything on the inside. Oh, nope, right there. It looks like it has a nice little nick, but you can't really feel it on the inside. This rotor right here I think is good. So I did notice one little dent on the back. Where is it at? Somewhere around here. There's one right there. And then there's one right there. And then there's, oh man, I didn't notice that was so big. So, oh, well, okay. So I have zero rotor, brand new rotors from Dodge because this one, it protrudes about halfway in. So they're, they must be dropping these from pretty far to cause that kind of damage. I could put this on a brake lathe and then cut that down and turn it, but these rotors are like $250 a piece, I think. So they shouldn't come like this. Dodge only ships them in a plastic bag right here with this piece of cardboard that's not even that thick. It's this piece of cardboard. I don't even know if you'd call that a piece of cardboard and that piece of paper. So I need to call the dealership, tell them that I'm gonna need replacement rotors, which I think it took months to get these ones. So what I'm gonna do for the time being is I'm just gonna throw the old rusty ones everybody was mad about back on there, which I really didn't wanna do because I'm putting brand new Hawk pads on there as well. So let's throw these rotors on. I'll worry about coating these rotors, or not these rotors, these ones are gonna probably end up going in the trash. Definitely because that one's cracked and that crack is gonna end up protruding further. It might not, but I can see that it's all the way down into here. And once there's a crack, it could just crack all the way across. And you don't want that on a high performance car that goes 200 miles an hour. So let's just throw these in the trash. Well, the dealership will probably throw them in the trash. Throw those old rusty, old faithful rusty rotors back on there and get the rear wheels on the car and we'll be able to finally set her down on her weight, set the coilovers 
and the rear suspension is gonna be 100% done. We will be at SEMA. I'll be at SEMA all week. I don't go Fridays because it's not worth going, but the other days I'll be there. So if you're at SEMA, you see me, say what's up. And uh, we'll just kind of go from there. But the Charger Wagon will see me when I get back. I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.